This screencast will provide a conceptual introduction to greedy algorithms and how they relate to dynamic programming. And also we'll give an example using two versions of the knapsack problem to show that these two differ. Thinking of the photographs that might match the idea of greedy algorithms, I thought that uh, being greedy means grabbing the thing that looks good up close without thinking about what happens later. So maybe like grabbing a pretty flower or some fruit. So we got flowers and fruit in this one. Both dynamic programming and greedy algorithms are used to solve problems where there's multiple ways of solving the problem. There's multiple legal solutions, but you want to find a solution that either maximizes some value or minimizes some cost. And this value or cost is expressed in what's called an objective function. It's a function that gives you a number that you're trying to maximize or minimize. The greedy strategy is to locally optimize this objective function. And it typically leaves just one subproblem to solve because it'll it'll take bite off a small piece of the problem, like picking the flower or the fruit. So it's going to leave one subproblem. Now, of course, this only works if the, that greedy choice, that local optimization, is always part of some optimal solution. So this is called the greedy choice property. And it's related to the familiar property of optimal substructure. Both greedy algorithms and dynamic programming require that problems have optimal substructure. So we need to demonstrate that an optimal solution to the problem contains within it optimal solutions to subproblems. And we need to show that if we chip off the greedy choice, the one subproblem that remains by the optimal substructure then will, will itself be solvable through recursive greedy algorithm. And then you sort of build things up that way. So how do these compare? They're both recursive strategies where you take a problem and you break it down into subproblems solved recursively. And both require optimal substructure for this to work. But they differ in some key respects. First of all, dynamic programming works bottom up. It solves the subproblems first, whereas the greedy strategy is top down. And that's because it makes a local choice before solving the, the subproblem that that creates. And I'll add this up here. The dynamic programming is solving the subproblems first. So what are some of the consequences of this? Well, the, there's the assumption here with the greedy strategy that you can do this, that, that you can make a local choice and it doesn't matter how that you solve the other problems. So it cannot handle overlapping subproblems that are interdependent on each other. Whereas dynamic programming, of course, exploits the overlapping subproblems for efficiency. And furthermore, it makes choices knowing the optimal solutions to subproblems. And the solutions to subproblems first lets you do two things. It makes it more efficient because you don't have to resolve them, and it addresses interactions. This is not to say that greedy strategies, when they work, are not efficient. This efficiency here was relative to the divide and conquer strategy, where we would repeatedly encounter the same problem and resolve it, and resolving wasting work. The greedy strategy can be very efficient, but it requires that you can just make this local choice without having to worry about what else is going on. So that is the gist of the conceptual difference between the two. And uh, now let's look at an example of the knapsack problem, two versions of it, where one of these works and the other doesn't. So in both the knapsack problems, we have a thief with a knapsack or a pack of fixed capacity. And the thief wants to optimize the value of what he takes. The 0-1 knapsack problem, there's n items. And uh, item i has some value of i and weighs some weight w of i, as shown in the picture here. So these might be pounds in, in value. This is called the 0-1 knapsack problem because you have to either take an item or not take an item. 0 does not take it. 1 is taking it. Then there's the fractional knapsack, where the thief can take a fractional amount of each item. 
So these, both of these problems have optimal substructure. If you have an optimal solution, then it must be, you know, say you pack three items in there and it's op optimal. It must be the case that the solution, for example, if you've got a capacity of 100 and you have um, it filled with an item uh, 20, 30, and 50, the solution to a subproblem, such as filling in one of those halves of 50, must be optimal. Because if it wasn't, cut and paste argument. You could take the thing out, put something optimal in there, and then the total would add up to more, contradicting the assumption that the solution was optimal in the first place. But only the fractional knapsack problem has the greedy choice property. So let's see what would happen if the if a greedy algorithm were run on the fractional or sorry on the uh, zero one knapsack problem under the strategy of uh, optimized value per unit of weight. In other words, a density strategy. So the knapsack over here has a capacity of fifty. And under this greedy strategy, it would say the densest thing is the item of 10. It would fill that up. And then the next dense thing would be the item of 20. And it would fill that up, giving us a total of $160. Because what you got left here, after doing 10 and 20, you've only got 20, 20 left unused capacity here. So you can't put the item of 30 in there. Whereas the Dynamic programming would find the optimal strategy of, again, this is a total 50, and it would realize that if it put in the two less dense items, so those are not optimal, lo not locally optimal choices, you would get a total of 100 and 120 or 220 in your knapsack. But the greedy strategy can, can work with the uh, fractional problem because, of course, it can do the 10 and then it can do the 20 and it's got 20 left here and it can take uh, 20 of item 3 and so that would be 60 and 100 and then the least dense item we got two-thirds of it which would be um, 80 dollars that's 240 which is more than here because this is a different problem you know the, the rules are different here so that shows that these two strategies are good for different problems and uh, hopefully illustrates how the strategies differ from each other. And that concludes our brief conceptual comparison of greedy algorithms and dynamic programming as we reach greedily for a Raspberry on Haleakala.